Okay, okay. So if you're tuning in via the Zoom webinar, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the chat in case you want to follow along. Uh, and for those on Twitch, uh, go ahead and just visit the link. Uh, I will also try dropping that in the Twitch chat here. Let me see. Uh, I can just copy it from Zoom chat and send it to you. Send oh, it to Twitch. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, and uh, for anyone in the Zoom webinar, uh, the link has just been put in the chat. That is a link to the guide that we'll be following today. So go ahead and feel free to open it up. I'll give everyone a quick second to do that, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so uh, before we get started, just one quick thing. Uh, I do have the chat Q&A and Twitch chat pulled open. Uh, so at any time, if you have any questions, feel free to drop in the chat and I'll make sure to answer your question as soon as possible. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started here. First of all, I wanna start off with this video of Bill Gates jumping over a chair. So I'm not sure if the audio is gonna share here, but Really, it's just the video yeah, that's worth watching. Jump over a chair from standing position. It depends on the size of the chair. Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes. All right. So that video is going to serve as the inspiration for our game today. We're going to create a game where we have Bill Gates jump over a chair. And if we have more time at the end of today's workshop, we're going to add a lot more cool features. Okay, so how do we get started? Well, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link in the chat to access the Construct website. Uh, it is editor.construct.net for those in the Twitch. And then let me go ahead and drop this here in the chat. And I strongly recommend you to go ahead and click on that uh, and follow along as we go today. I'll make sure to pause at different points so that you can catch up if needed. Okay, and once you're now on the Construct website, again, that is editor.construct.net, go ahead and click on the new project button at the top right of your screen. It is the one right here that I'm hovering uh, and it's turned green on my screen. So go ahead and click on that and you should see a pop-up that looks just like this on my screen right now. I'm going to go ahead and pick a name for our project that we're gonna be creating today. I'm going to call it Bill Gates Jump In over chair. Um, but really, you can name this whatever you want. So go ahead and take a moment to come up with a quick name. And then for the rest of the settings on this pop-up, just leave them as is. OK, and once you have that, Go ahead and click on the Create button down here at the bottom. And now we're on the main Construct Editor page. Again, I'm just going to pause here for one quick second just to make sure everyone can catch up. And now let's get into what exactly are we looking at. So here in the center with this uh, giant gray area in the middle of my screen, that is the world map. Notice how there is a dotted line that forms a right angle at the top left of this gray area. We'll go and get into that in more details right after we discuss what else is on the screen. To the right over here, we have two panels. We have the project panel. So this is where we can see all the files, um, anything related to the structure of our project. And then down below, we can see the layers in our project. To the left, we can see the properties panel. And this includes all the properties of whichever object, sprite, character, anything in our project that we want to look at. So what is the first thing that every game needs? 
Well, we need characters in our game, right? So the first character I can think of that we need to create is Bill Gates himself. So how do we create Bill Gates in our game? Well, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead, hover your mouse over anywhere within that dotted line inside the world map on the middle of your screen, and then go in and right click. Once you do that, you should see this pop-up menu, and one of the options should say, insert new object. Go ahead and click on that. You'll see this menu pop up on your screen. I'm going to pause here for a quick second. And again, just to repeat what I said earlier, right click anywhere within the dotted area on the world map. That's the gray area in the middle of your screen. Click insert new object. And then we should be at this menu right here. Okay, and once we're here, we need to choose what type of object are we creating? Well, I want to create a character for our game. So we need to create something, what is called a sprite. It is spelled just like the soda. So go ahead and type sprite in the search bar. And what a sprite is, is that, is that it is just another term for a character in the game. So once you have typed in sprite in the search bar, go ahead and double click on the sprite icon, and now we're back on the world map. But this time, I can see that my mouse is turning into this plus sign. Go ahead and click anywhere within the dotted area with the plus sign. And once I click, I have a paint screen pop up. This is where you can actually draw your character and customize it however you like. So again, in case you missed it, from the previous menu that we were on, type sprite into the search bar, Double click on the sprite icon. Your mouse will turn into a plus sign. Click anywhere within the dotted area on the world map, and then you will see this paint menu pop up. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and actually draw Bill Gates here. I'm no artist, so I'm going to keep it simple. But feel free to go all out if you want to. Let's go ahead and pick a nice color here. I actually like this shade of green, so let's just go with that. And select one of the drawing tools on the left. I'm going to select the, I think this is the paintbrush. And then I'm going to go ahead and just draw a circle here. And we're going to give it a pair of eyes, a nice smile. And I think Bear, uh, Bill Gates was wearing some glasses in that video. So I'm going to just switch to a different color here. Let's pick a nice shade of blue. And then let me see if I can draw some glasses for Bill Gates. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pause here for a quick second to let you draw your Bill Gates character. And then we'll move on from here. And again, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to put it in the chat or use the Q&A feature if you're on the Zoom call. All right, so once you finish drawing your character for Bill Gates, there is one more thing we need to do before we can X out of the screen and save our character. So what exactly do we need to do? Well, if you take a look at the screen, you can see this black, blocks, uh, black box surrounding our character that we, did, uh, that we just drew. And what we need to do is that we need to shrink this box to perfectly fit the character that we just drew. Uh, the box is also known as a bounding box, and it basically represents the boundaries surrounding our character. So if it is too big, the boundaries around our character are going to be also too big, and then that might mess up some of the things in our game, such as movement. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to click on this button in the top center. It is a crop button, and if we go in and click on that, we'll see that the box is automatically shrunk to fit our character perfectly. So before you X out of the screen, make sure to click on the crop button, 
And once you do that, you can go ahead and click on the X at the top right. Once you do that, we can see that we have our very first character of our game. All right, so the next step is that we need to add some of the other characters that we need for our game. I think we also need a chair, of course, and then afterwards we should probably add a floor for Bill Gates and the chair to be on, right? So let's go ahead and repeat the process again for adding a character to our game. The first step is to right click anywhere within the dotted area on the world map. Go ahead and click insert new object. And then type in Sprite into the search bar. Once you have that, double click on Sprite. Your mouse turns into the plus sign and then click anywhere inside the dotted area. Once you have that, we're back in the paint screen, and I'm going to go ahead and pick a nice color to draw my chair. Let's go with this shade of pink. And then, you know, like I said earlier, I'm no artist, so feel free to go all out, but I'm just going to draw a really quick basic chair. And once you're done drawing your chair, go ahead and click on the crop button. Again, it's at the top center, and we need to do this so that the box around the character shrinks. And once you have that done, go ahead and click on the X at the top right. I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time just to add the floor, and then we'll move on from there. So again, right click anywhere inside the world map, click insert new object, type in sprite, double click sprite, Click anywhere inside the dotted area now that your mouse is turned to a plus sign. And then you're back at the paint screen. So for this floor, I think I'm going to go with a shade of, let's go with a shade of yellow. And then for the floor, I'm just going to draw a straight line here. And again, don't forget, you need to crop your sprite before you exit. And how do we do that? Just go ahead and click the button at the top center. All right, so we now have the characters that we need for our game. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange them slightly on my screen here. I'm going to move the floor to the bottom, stretch out the floor so that it covers the entire dotted area. I'm going to move the chair over here. I'm going to move Bill Gates over here, and I'm actually going to shrink the chair a little bit. You know, I don't think the chair is as tall as Bill Gates. Otherwise, that would be quite a tall chair. So I'm just going to shrink it a little bit here. And I'm going to shrink Bill Gates by a little bit as well. So how about we actually go ahead and try to play our game right now? And before I click play to try out our game so far, go ahead and take a moment to think, what will happen when I click the play button? Do we expect something to happen? And if so, what are we expecting? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click this play button at the top center of my screen. And this is the button that we can use to test our game. Once you do that, you can see this pop-up window appear on your window. And, you know, I'm using my arrow keys right here. I'm trying to play the game, but nothing's happening. So this means that we need to go back and add something new to our game. And what is that? Well, we need to add behaviors to our characters. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of the game here. And let's go ahead and add some behaviors to our characters. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to be able to control Bill Gates with the arrow keys, right? Just like in any typical game. So go ahead and click on Bill Gates, and then inside the Properties tab, which is on the left of your screen, go ahead and click on Edit Behaviors. Once you do that, on the menu in the middle that just popped up, go ahead and click Add New Behavior. The behavior that we want to add to Bill Gates is called Platformer. Go ahead and just type that into the search bar and then double click on the platform option. 
And what this will do is that it will allow us to control Bill Gates with the right, left, up, and down arrow keys. Once you've done that, go ahead and click X. And I'll pause here for a quick second just to let everyone catch up. In the meantime, if you're already caught up, go ahead and take a minute to think what will happen now if I press play and I try running the game. Okay, let's go in and try out the game that we've made so far. So again, I'm going to click the play button at the top. And now I have this pop-up window up here and oh, Bill Gates just dropped out of our window. You know, I'm trying to scroll to see if I can find him, but I can't scroll, I think, I think we lost Bill Gates. That's not good. So why is Bill Gates just dropping out of our game window? That's no fun, right? Well, it's because we didn't make Bill Gates solid and we didn't make the floor solid and we didn't make the chair solid either. So whenever we start the game, these objects just start falling through the world. So how can we fix that? Well, if I X out of here, we need to just add another behavior to our characters. So just like last time, click on Bill Gates and on the properties tab, which is on the left side of your screen, scroll down and click on edit behaviors. Once you see that, go ahead and click Add New Behavior. And this time we want to add the solid behavior. Double click on that to add it, and then feel free to click X. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for both the floor and the chair, because we also want the floor to be solid and the chair as well. So just click on the floor, Edit Behaviors, Add New Behaviors, and Solid. Likewise, we're going to do the same for the chair. Click on the chair, click Edit Behaviors, click Add New Behavior, and double click on Solid. Again, I'm going to pause here for a quick second just to let you catch up. And in the meantime, if you're already caught up, take another minute to think, what are we expecting our game to do now if we try running it? All right, let's go ahead and try out our game now. I'm going to click X just to get out of the behavior menu. And then let's go ahead and click on the play button again. Uh, I do see a question in the chat here. Uh, what if we added platform to either the chair or floor? How would the computer know which object to move if we click any arrow? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you were to add the platform behavior to multiple characters in your game, uh, what would happen is that as you press an arrow key, it would actually move both characters or however many characters you added the platform behavior to all at the same time. So like, for instance, if I added it to Bill Gates and the chair, the platform behavior, then if I tried plus pressing the right arrow key, both Bill Gates and the chair would move to the right at the same time. So. For the purpose of this game, I would recommend not doing that, but that's definitely something fun to experiment with. So let's go ahead and press play here. And now this time I see that Bill Gates doesn't fall through the world, fortunately. And if I go in and use the arrow keys, I can see that I can control Bill Gates, I can jump, and let's go and actually try jumping over the chair. Perfect. And then if I jump back over it and I try running into the chair, I can see that the chair indeed is solid. So that means we added the behaviors correctly to the floor, chair, and Bill Gates. Uh, I see a question in the chat here. How do you change the gravity? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I can actually get to that right after we finish testing out our game here.
Okay, so once you've finished testing our new game, let's go ahead and click the X button at the top left to exit out of the pop-up window. And let's actually go ahead and change the gravity in our game. So how can we do that? Well, if I click on Bill Gates and I scroll down in the properties tab, which again is on the left side of your screen, I can see a number here labeled gravity under the platform behavior, and it's currently set to 1500. At the bottom, it specifies this is acceleration from gravity in pixels per second per second. So if we want to increase gravity, we simply just make the number bigger. And if we want to decrease gravity, we can just make the number smaller. So let's say Bill Gates decided to travel to Mars, where the gravity is a little bit less than that on Earth, uh, and just decide to try jumping over a chair over there. So in order to simulate that, let's just drop the gravity down to, let's say, a thousand. And now if I go ahead and click the play button, and I try jumping, I see that Bill Gates jumps a lot higher than he used to. And again, that's because we decreased the gravity by modifying one of the properties under the platform behavior. So clearly this game is a little bit too easy right now. I can clear this chair with ease. All right, so what is something else that we can add to our game? Well, typically in the game, if you do something wrong, like let's say you step on an enemy, for example, you either die and have to restart the game or you lose a point of some sort, right? So let's go and add a feature similar to that to our very own game. I see a quick question in the chat here. Uh, is there a way you could jump on the lower part of the chair? Uh, if you're talking about the seat of the chair, uh, there should be a way to do that. What you simply have to do is you have to modify the bounding box for the chair. And again, that was that black outline around the chair in the paint editor menu uh, so that it would just curve right around the seat of the chair instead of um, leaving a, a little bit of a gap above the seat of the chair. Uh, and again, another question in the chat. Uh, Bill Gates appears to hit the box in my chair, but doesn't actually hit the chair that is colored. Is there any way to change that? Got it. So uh, if you're if what you mean is that the box of the chair seems to be bigger than the actual chair, the one that has the color, um, that probably means that you forgot to crop the chair uh, in the paint menu. So in order to fix that, just click on the chair, actually double click on it, and then double check to see that the bounding box around the chair fits it perfectly. And if it doesn't, just click on the crop button. Okay, so let's go and add one of those features I was talking about where if something wrong happens in the game, you either lose a point or you have to restart the game. So how can we do that? Well, we're going to use something called events. And in order to create one, we need to go to the event sheet. To do that, click on the event sheet tab at the top center of your screen. And then click on add event, which is at the top center, though a little bit to the left. And what we want to do is that we want to add an event where if Bill Gates runs into the chair and collides with it, we want to restart the game because, you know, that would hurt a lot in real life if you just collided with the chair. So how can we do this? Well, go in and select Bill Gates, double click on him, and then type in collision in the search bar. And then we want to go ahead and select the on collision with another object option, since we want to check to see if Bill Gates is colliding with the chair in our case. Double click on that, and then it will ask you which object do you want to check for a collision with. And like I said earlier, we want to check to see if Bill Gates is colliding with the chair. So go ahead and click on the selection menu, and then go ahead and double click on the chair. Once you have that, click done. And then we'll move on from there. I will pause here for a quick second and check the chat to see if there are any questions. So 
So I see a question in the chat here. Is there a way to make another chair and be able to jump on all of the chairs? Yeah, there definitely is. Um, we can actually go ahead and try that out after we finish making our event and action on the screen right here. Okay, so the next step to complete our feature here is to add an action to the event that we just created. To do that, go ahead and click on the Add Action button. And then go ahead and select the System option since we're modifying something with the game as a whole. And in our case, we want to reset the entire game if Bill Gates hits the chair. So go ahead and double click on the System icon. And then type in Restart in the search menu. Once you do that, double click on restart layout, which will do exactly what it sounds like. It will restart the game for us. Double click on that. And we have just finished our very first event in action. Now, if I go ahead and press the play button, and let's say, you know, I just have Bill Gates run straight into the chair. I see that whenever that happens, the game automatically restarts. So if I jump and I accidentally land on the chair, the game restarts. And again, I'm going to pause here for a quick second, just to let everyone catch up. And I'll go ahead and check to see if there are any other questions. Oh, okay. Uh, someone mentioned in the chat that you can't see the game window when I'm actually testing the game. Uh, sorry about that. Let me actually go ahead and stop sharing and let me reshare the window. There we go. So I think it should be sharing my game window now. Sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know. And then, so let me just do a quick demo here. If I use the arrow keys to run straight into the chair, the game restarts. And if I jump, and I land straight on the chair, the game also restarts. You can also see uh, one of the features that we messed with uh, earlier was the gravity. When Bill Gates jumps, he jumps really high, a lot higher than he used to. Uh, another question in the chat here, how did you get to the restart layout place? Yeah, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Let me switch back to the game window, uh, the editor window, I mean. And in order to get to restart layout, just click add action, double click system, and type in restart. And you will go in and see the restart layout here on the screen. Okay, awesome. Let's actually add a couple more features. Uh, I remember someone in the chat mentioned that they would love to add another chair to our game. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to go back to the world map, just click on the layout one tab at the top. And then to add another character to our game, we can just do the same steps that we did earlier. So right click anywhere inside the world map, go ahead and click insert new object, type in sprite, Your mouse turns into a plus sign, click anywhere inside the dotted area, and we're back to the paint editor. So let's shake things up a little bit here. Uh, I see a question in the chat here. Could you import your own images? Yeah, you actually can. Um, let's see if we, if we can actually do that on stream here. So I'm just going to Google chair. And then if I go to Google images, let me just uh, pull a chair from here. Let me see if I can actually get a transparent background share. It'll make things a little bit easier. Uh, perfect. This looks like a good chair. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that to my computer. And then if I go back to the contract window, I should be able to upload this. If I go ahead and click on the folder icon, which is the second one at the top. We can go ahead and select 
the chair image that I just downloaded. And I think my computer might be lagging a little bit. But let me see. Yep, the chair definitely got imported. <laughs> it's just so big that you can't see the full chair on my screen. So let me see if I can actually, you know, let me uh, let me switch here. And then can I go ahead and crop and then let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, good. So it did crop around the chair. It's just a very, very big chair. So if you want to go ahead and try importing your own image for your second chair, go ahead and take a second to do that. If it's too big, don't worry about it. I'll go and shrink it once we finish saving it on the screen here. I see a question in the chat here. Can we import text such as Bill Gates jump the chair? Yeah, you can definitely add text to your game. I'm actually going to show you how to do that later in the workshop. So we'll get there as soon as possible. Uh, and another question, how did you import the image again? Yeah, great question. So once you're on the paint editor screen, go ahead and click on this folder icon. It's the second one at the top. And then it will open up to your downloads folder or your documents folder on your computer and just click on whichever image that you want to upload. Okay, once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and click the X here. And yeah, that is definitely a very big chair. Let me actually adjust the size here. So again, I'm modifying the size of the chair in the properties menu, which is on the left side of your screen. Right now it is 2,075 by 2,725. That is quite big for a chair. Let's actually try shrinking it down to, let's say 500 uh, and 500. There we go. So now the chair is a little bit more manageable. And now I'm just going to grab one of the corners and shrink it down to a nice size. So I'm going to just add it right there, somewhere in between the end of the boundary and the other chair. Now, before we can actually test the game now, don't forget that we need to make this chair solid as well. So go ahead and just click on the chair, click Edit Behaviors in the Properties tab, click add new behavior and double click solid. I'm going to pause here, just to let everyone catch up. And then let me also check the chat here. Uh, so a question the chat uh, is asking, on your chair here right now, there are empty places. So if Bill Gates hits one of those empty spaces, will the game restart? Yeah, so if you're talking about the C of the chair, let me exit out here so I can show you what we're talking about. If you're talking about this area between the blue lines and the actual chair image, uh, if Bill Gates hits that space, he will actually cause a game restart at the moment since we don't have the bounded box cropped exactly to the dimensions of the chair. Um, if you want to make that not happen, what you need to do is that you need to somehow modify the bounded box uh, to precisely fit the actual chair. And then one more thing we need to do that I just remembered is that we also need to add a new event for the chair that we just added. So let's go ahead and go back to the event sheet here. And then let's go ahead and add a new event. And we're going to follow the same steps as last time. Click Add Event. We want to check to see if Bill Gates is climbing with a chair. So go ahead and double click on Bill Gates. Go ahead and type in Collision into the search bar. Select on collision with another object. Go ahead and choose the new chair that you just drew or imported. And then click done. And again, just like last time, we want to restart the game if he hits the chair. So click add action, double click system, type in restart, and select restart layout. Once you have that, 
if I go in and click play, and this time, let me actually switch my window here so you guys can see it. Now, if I jump over this chair, I actually think Bill Gates, oh, he just barely fits in between those two chairs. If I try jumping over this chair, it works. But if I go back and I land right on that chair, the game restarts. So I'm going to pause here for a quick second just to let you play around the game. Uh, and I'll also take a look at the chat here to see if there are any new questions. Okay, so now something that we're going to try out is that we're going to add text to our game. Uh, I just see, I just saw another question in the chat here. Let's see. Uh, when I try adding Bill Gates collision option from the second chair, it doesn't work. Yeah, no worries. Let me go ahead and show you how to do it one more time on my screen. Let me stop sharing my game window. Uh, let me go ahead and share my construct editor here. Uh, and then again, the, the thing that you want to do is click add event, double click on Bill Gates, typing collision, select on collision with another object, and then choose the second chair. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so let's go ahead and try adding some text to our game. And in our case, I mentioned earlier that when something wrong in the game occurs, you know, typically you either restart the game or you lose a point or you like you have a fails counter going on, right? So you can track the number of times you failed something. So in our case, how about we add a counter that tracks the number of times that we unsuccessfully tried jumping over the chair and we accidentally slammed Bill Gates into the chair. So how do we do that? Well, we're already on the event sheet, so we're, we're in the place that we need to be. Go ahead and right click on the add action button. And then you'll see this option at the bottom here called add global variable. And what we need to do is that we need to somehow track and store the number of times that Bill Gates falls onto one of the chairs. So to do that, we need to create a variable. And in our case, we need to create a global variable so that it is um, the variable is present across all aspects of our game. Go ahead and click on the add global variable option. And then just go ahead and name the variable whatever you like. Uh, I would recommend naming it something similar to, you know, number of times you fall in the chair or something along those lines. So I'm going to just name it fails, something short and simple. And then make sure you have the number type selected. And it starts off at zero, right? Because when you start the game, you know, he hasn't fallen on the chair yet. Once you have that, click OK. And then you'll see that we have this new global number pop up at the top of our event sheet. So now what we need to do is that we need to tell our game Hey, whenever Bill Gates jumps on the chair and actually crashes into it, we need you to update this number by one. So how do you do that? Well, just like with the restart layout action, we're just going to go ahead and add another action to our events. So go ahead and click on add action. And this time, double click on system. And we're going to select the add to option. Double click on that, and we'll see here that it already has pre-filled everything that we need. We want to add a value to the fails counter, and we want to specifically add one to that counter. So go ahead and click done. And now whenever we jump on the pink chair, the game will automatically update our fails counter by one. We also want to do the same thing with our second chair. So I'm just going to click add action, 
double click on system, find the add to option, make sure the values are filled in correctly, fails and one, and then click done. So this is all neat and handy, right? But you know, we actually haven't actually added the text to the game yet. So how do we do that? Well, in our case, let's go back to the layout. And again, you can do that by clicking on a layout tab at the top of your screen. And then right click anywhere inside the dotted area, just as if we're going to add another sprite. So right click, click insert new object. But this time, instead of sprite, Go ahead and scroll down and find the text option. You can also just type text into the search bar if you want to. And double click on text. And just like with a sprite, your mouse turns into a plus sign. Just click anywhere inside the dotted area. Once you do that, I can see that a text box has popped up on our screen. Right now, it just says text. Just leave it as is. We'll change that later in the event sheet. I'm actually going to just move this to the top here so it's nice and square in the center. And you know what? Let's actually change the color here. So if I scroll down on the properties tab and then select the color option, let's see, can I actually make this white just so that it shows up a little bit better on our screen here since we do have a great background. Perfect. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is that we need to have this text box update whenever um, our score changes or at the start of the game, it should be zero, right? So how do we do this? Let's go and go back to the event sheet. And then go ahead and click on add event. And go ahead and click system. The option that we're going to select here is every tick. And what this means is that every tick, and a tick is a unit of time during the game, for our purposes, we could treat this as a forever loop or an always statement. We wanna do something. So go ahead and double click on every tick. And then once you have that event added to the event sheet, go ahead and double click, uh, not double click, just click on the add action option. Once you have that, select the text box that we just added, and then scroll down until you find the set text option. And again, you can also just type this into the search bar if you want to. Once you find the set text option, go ahead and double click on that. And we're actually going to change this to fails or whatever you named your variable. So if say for instance, you named your variable num crashes, you wanna go ahead and type in num crashes into the field here. And what you should see on your screen is that it should automatically uh, populate the field with your variable and it should have that little globe icon to the left. So in our case, I'm going to go ahead and select the fails variable here, click on that. And then I'm going ahead uh, and click in done. So now if I go in and press play, and let me go in and switch screens here, we can see that our counter now shows up as zero at the start of the game. And if I go ahead and intentionally jump on this pink chair, when that happens, the counter goes up by one. And then if I jump over the pink chair, but I crash into the white chair, the counter also goes up. However, if I jump over both of them successfully, nothing happens to the counter. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here for a quick second to let you try it out by yourself. Uh, and I'll go ahead and check the chat to see if there are any questions. So quick question in the chat here. Uh, what does every tick mean again? Yeah, that's a great question. So a tick is a unit of time. Uh, it's a, it's, you can think of it similar to a second, but it's a lot shorter than a second. 
Um, I know in a game like Minecraft, for example, there are 20 ticks per second. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head how many ticks there are in a second in Construct, um, but for the purposes of this game that we're creating here, you can basically treat the every tick statement as an always or forever statement. So we always do this thing or we forever do this thing. Uh, another question here, I was just messing around and I made my Bill Gates go out of the screen. And I can't bring him back. Is that supposed to happen? Yeah, so if you are messing around with Bill Gates and you press on the left arrow key too much and he just falls out of the world, um, that is supposed to happen based on what we have in our game so far. We just didn't add a boundary at the end of the world map. You can add that later on your own time if you want to. Oh, and another question here, uh, how do we add sound to the game? Yeah, that is a great question. Uh, if we have time at the end, I'm actually going to get to that. Uh, but before we try that out, I do have one more feature that I want to show. Uh, and then another question, um, what if we wanted to say you failed these many times, uh, end quote, and uh, where these many times is how many times you failed, how could you do that? Yeah, that is a great question. We can actually give that a try here right now. So if I go and uh, switch back to the editor screen, and then if I uh, double click on our text set action, and then let me see if I can get this to work here. Let's see, it actually might not want to, don't think that's the correct syntax in this case here. But basically you should be able to join together two strings uh, inside this text parameter. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to run out of time in this workshop here. So I would just recommend looking this up. Uh, I'm pretty sure you should be able to find it online pretty easily. Okay, so one of the last features I would like to show today is if we go back to the layout page, I want to make this game a little bit harder because right now it's pretty easy just to jump over the first chair and then jump over the second chair, right? So how about I actually delete the second chair? Sorry, second chair. Let me just move the text over here to the left. And let's just make this pink chair super tall like really tall. And if I go in and click play here, and let me switch my screen so you can see it as well. If I try jumping over the chair, there is no way I can jump over this chair, you know, even with the reduced gravity that we modified earlier. So how can we help out Bill Gates here? Well, let me go ahead and switch back to the editor. How about we add a spinning platform of some sorts that if you time it correctly, Bill Gates can jump on the platform and then jump over the chair. So how do we do that? Well, we need to go and add a new character to our game, right? So I'm going to right click anywhere inside the dotted area, click on insert new object, type in sprite into the search bar, the mouse turns into a plus sign, and then click anywhere inside the dotted area. Once I have that, I'm back to the familiar paint screen. And let's go ahead and choose another color here. Uh, I don't think we have a red thing yet. So let's just pick a nice shade of red. And then I'm just going to draw a flat line here just to represent a spin-in platform. And again, don't forget, we need to make sure we click the crop button before we exit out of here. So once you've done that, click X to save. 
And I'm going to go ahead and move this platform somewhere right about there, about halfway in terms of height of the chair. We want to make this a little bit harder, right? We, we can't just make this so easy that Bill Gates can just jump on a static, non-moving platform and jump over the chair. So how do we make this a little bit more difficult? Well, if I go ahead and click on the platform that we just added and then click Edit Behaviors, the first thing that I want to do is make this solid. And then the second thing that I want to do is I want to make this spin. So to do that, click on Add New Behavior and then type in, uh, I think it's actually Rotate. Yep. So go ahead and double click on the Rotate option. And we should be all set. Go ahead and click X. And let's go ahead and press play here to try out our game. Let me switch screens. And we can see that our platform is now rotating. So now if I try jumping on the platform and I get a boost off of that, I can jump over the chair successfully. And without the platform, you know, if I were to try to jump back, I would just slam into the chair and have to restart the game. So we are approaching the end of our time slot, I believe. So I do want to go ahead and stop here in terms of new content and open up the floor for any last minute questions. Uh, let me go ahead and check the chat here. One of the questions is, can we control the speed of the rotation? Yeah, you definitely can. So let me switch back to the editor here. And then if we select the platform and we go to the properties tab on the left, right now we can see that the speed is set to 180. And you know, let's say we just wanna make it a lot harder for Bill Gates. We could go ahead and set it to, let's say 270. And now if I go ahead and press play and I switch my screen back to the game window, we can see that it is spinning a little bit faster. And now if I try jumping on it, I think I still can, yep, and I still get a nice boost over the chip. You know what, let me see if I can actually make that really faster. So if I go ahead and click on that and bump up the speed to let's say 500, press play, switch back to the game window here. Oh yeah, now it's spinning super fast. So if I jump on it, I get a really nice boost over the chip. All right, any other questions? Yeah, so there's a question in the chat here. Can we block the character from going out of the screen? Yeah, you should be able to do that. Uh, what you basically need to do is that you need to add, um, one quick way that I can think about this is that you can just add a new sprite or character to the game. Uh, just make it a vertical line, make it solid and put it at the end or the start of the boundaries of the world map. I'm also sure there should be a behavior or some sort of feature of the game itself where you could just tell the sprite that you can't move past the world boundary. So either solution should work. All right, well, if there are no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link to the guide that we followed in the chat again, just in case you need it. And then for all of the Code Day attendees uh, that are watching this live, uh, I hope to see you at Code Day when it starts on Friday. Uh, if you have any questions about Construct during the event, feel free to ask them in the help desk channel and we'll love to help you out with whatever questions that you might have.
Um, otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in to the first pre-event workshop of Code Day. Uh, I hope you tune into some of the other pre-event workshops that are coming up tonight, and I can't wait to see you at kickoff on Friday.